hey, Ross World, my money makes money. You're trying to come up with that perfect, that grade A, that golden ticket number for retirement. You're wondering, one million dollars, one million dollars, a million dollars is enough for me to retire all of because I have this going, I have that going, I have this going. But when all your assets are done, with all your revenue is compiled, when everything is joined together, you have one million dollars that you can actually live from. Granted, those days are old, outnumbered, and outdated because of what? And we're going to talk about it again until you guys get it. Inflation. Inflation. Whatever you have sitting in the bank, subtract negative 2% from that. So that equation that you did last year, two years ago, or even this year, and you say, well, if I save this amount of money, if I invest this amount of money, even if I expect low returns, anywhere from 4 to 7%, by the time I'm 60, 65, I'll have at least $1 million and I'll be set. I'll be great. I'll still be getting my dividends. You did the math. You planned it out. Great job. Is $1 million going to be enough? Did you factor in negative 2% every year? And to be honest, I would actually factor in a negative 3% because inflation doesn't go down. Now, inflation may go down on particular products because the supply is up and the demand is down. But on a given whole, okay, on a generalization of inflation of every product, it's 2% climbing to 3%. So whatever factor, whatever algorithm, whatever math problem you did in order to get to your million dollars, you need to go back. You need to factor in a negative 3% from today until the time or year that you think you're going to have enough money to retire. One million dollars right now that you're saving for is not enough. Maybe it's 1.2. Maybe it's 1.5. I do not know. I don't know your expenses. I don't know the plan that you have for paying down your house, your condo, your double wide trailer, wherever you have, your cars. Are you going to buy another car? Whatever you're planning, whatever you think you're planning, you have to factor in bills that you have now, bills that you may have later, because this is the thing with people. We always get new cars, and you know some people, they got one good car. They have three, four, five. Oh, my uncle got six cars. Okay, he got six cars. But you may want a newer car when you're 50 or you're 60 or when you retire. Factor that in. You're like, well, I'm not the type of person. I live below my means, so I always have. Then great. You know yourself. Some people just don't know themselves. The point I'm making here, and not to rant about it, is go back, figure out how much that you're saving in order for you to live off of when you don't want to work no more. You just want to travel the globe. Factor that in too, because a lot of people, when you get old, you say, I've never been here. But now you don't have the money. You just have enough money to pay your bills every month and maybe go out once a month. Factor in that you may want to travel. So that $1 million you thought was enough is no longer enough. Maybe it's $2 million. But you're saying, how am I going to get the $2 million what I'm doing right now? Increase, increase, increase saving and investing, mostly investing once you get to that certain saving point, okay? Decrease, decrease debt, okay? When you start hitting 50 and 55, really, you don't want any debt. The only debt you really want is your house. And this is the thing with a house. If your equity in your home is more than how much you owe, you really don't have debt. That's good debt, if anything, because that equity, when you sell it, you'll get a profit back, okay? But a car, we already know, I call it managed debt because we always manage to have that debt, a car, but it's really bad debt. The car has no equity unless you, maybe you have some rare antiquity or antique car that someone's gonna pay you $50,000 and it's really only worth $10,000. But we're talking about regular people who don't have these extravagant play toys that you may want a car or your car that you have now that you paid 20, 30, even 40,000, 50,000 is no longer worth that. Soon as you drew it off the car lot, negative 5%, negative 5%. So listen, $1 million may not be enough. It may not be enough because uh, for me and my wife, a million dollars sound good right now. 
but it may not be enough. And as I encourage myself, as I encourage her, I need to encourage you that $1 million may not be enough and you need to factor in those things that you probably didn't factor in. This is Ross World, where we're going to continue to plan for our future because every single day we're getting closer to living in the future and retirement. I'm out.